One of the keys to success in Battlefield is knowing and understanding your gun. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you an amazing resource on the web that will enable you to understand every single statistic um, of your weapon. I'll be showing you how you can do direct weapon-to-weapon -weapon comparisons, and I'll also be showing you how where you can find some brilliant pictures of the recoil patterns of all of the guns. So let's get learning. Greetings, my name is The Adipose. Now I want to start a series called Know Your Gun, which is going to be a video series looking at how best to use certain weapons, how to use weapons to their strengths, and for you to be able to find out exactly what they're good at and exactly what they're bad at, and that how that will affect your play. Now in that series, I am going to be referring to this website a lot, because it is amazing. It is called simthic.com. Um, it's been around for a couple of years now and it is the best resource on the web for battlefield weapon data. Um, it has got a huge amount of statistics um, in terms of um, the weapon spread, the recoil, the recoil patterns, um, how various attachments affect the weapon. Um, it's got absolutely loads and because I want to refer to it regularly in a future series I wanted to take the chance to show you guys exactly what this website is about and how it can make you a better player. So in this video I'm really going to be taking this website apart and showing you all of the details that it's got that will enable you to understand your weapon better, for you to know your gun, and that will make to make you a more dangerous soldier on the battlefield. And you can see it's got a few um, web uh, games on here. You've got COD, uh, Medal of Honor, Planet Side, Modern Warfare, and but the main one is is Battlefield 3. And you've got um, the, these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, tick um, lists here as of uh, what we now the just just into June 2000, July 2013, um, will give you huge amounts of information about your weapons. So if we click on the weapons charts, that will take you to this page here. And what you'll see is all of the weapons for a specific class. And you can change the class you're looking at by um, changing these buttons up here. It's a very uh, very intuitive website that clearly someone's taken a lot of time um, to kind of put together. And if I just zoom in on to this, um, you have got a huge amount of information about your gun. And now, often when you're kind of using a gun, especially for a first time or a second time, or maybe even returning to a gun after a kind of a long period of not using it, your first questions are going to be things like, well, what are the advantages of this gun? What are the weaknesses? How do I play it? Do I go up close? Do I go from a distance? Do I go mid-range? Which way do I compensate for the recoil? Um, you know, all this kind of stuff. And actually, rather than having to kind of experiment and try and work it out from a bit of gameplay, you can just come here and it will tell you exactly um, what each gun um, is all about. Um, so let, let's talk you through one. So if I just zoom in a little bit more, let, let's talk about the AEK um, 9, 971 and show you all this awesome information that we've got here. First of all, we've got the, the name of the gun. It is the AEK. Then on the left hand side, um, just below here, I hope you can see my mouse okay, uh, we've got the number of rounds per minute and this fires at 900 rounds per minute and you can then compare that um, to all of the other kind of guns that you've got here. So you've got, you can actually see that the AK is actually pretty fast, in fact only one gun in the assault category is faster than it and then it gets slower and slower until we get down to the GA, G3A3 which basically fires at half the speed um, of the FAMAS. Uh, we've then got the uh, bullet velocity, so what that effectively means is um, how quickly is the bullet going to get to your target and although you might be kind of thinking well 630 meters a second or 508 meters a second I mean is that really going to make a difference and um, the answer is if you're using a sniper rifle over a really long distance or if you're if you're shooting an assault rifle over a longer distance against someone that's sprinting across somewhere then it can make a distance and it would affect the amount of leading you have to do with a target um, we've then got the max distance that the the weapon works for so in this case it's 870 meters and we've also got the um, the amount of suppression that is given per bullet and you can see that in terms of suppression given off by um, assault rifles it's nearly almost completely universal um, until we get down to uh, the G3A3 which is that is that gun which is just a little bit of an exception in most cases Right now we've got a, a nice little graph here now this is your damage fall off which basically tells you up until what distance you're doing maximum damage and then after what distance you're doing minimum damage. 
Okay, so let's have a look here, and you can see that most assault rifles are the same, but they're not all the same. And actually, the other important thing to notice is that the this chart will change depending on what accessories we've got attached, and I'll come back to that um, a little bit later. But if we look at this first one here, it says, um, and it, as you put the mouse over it, you get a handy little graph that comes up, or a little bit of extra information that comes up, and it tells you that the max damage that the AEK does is 25 and that maximum damage um, is done up until 8 meters so anyone within 8 meters or below is going to be hit with your full 25 so that's four bullets um, to kill unless of course it's a headshot and then slowly that damage will uh, drop off and you can see the graph here going down and down and down so you know you'll still be doing almost um, 25 damage at 8 meters 0.5 but it will be a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less until you get to 50 meters and then at 50 meters you're then doing your minimum damage um, for this particular gun which is 18 and of course that then because that's below 20 is actually then a six shot kill um, with this particular gun and we'll be talking we'll be looking at the accessories like the heavy barrel in a little bit and how that can be modified but that's a really useful way of un trying to understand your gun and thinking about well how many bullets is it likely to take me to kill various people at various ranges and that might then affect how long your bursts are going to be or even if you actually attempt to kill on that person um, at all. Now we've got a bunch of numbers here. Three, uh, sorry, five or six white numbers. Uh, we've got the bullet type. Um, I must confess, I don't know a lot about bullet type when it comes to battlefield, um, but it's there um, if you want it. And then we've got three numbers, uh, which are our reload times. Now the reload times um, change depending on um, what is go what is going on. Now the this for the first number here is the amount of time it will take you to reload if you still have a bullet at least one bullet left in the gun so let's say the let's say there's 31 possible bullets in the gun which is obviously shown by here and you've still got 15 left then that means when you reload it'll take you 2.55 seconds when there's only one bullet left it'll still take you 2.55 seconds but if you empty the whole thing so your gun your magazine is completely empty it increases to this number here which means that when your gun is completely empty it will now take you a whopping with the AEK 3.68 seconds to get your gun reloaded now one of the reasons why the M16A3 is such a popular gun is that reload time 1.8 seconds if you've still got a bullet in the chamber 2.3 if it's completely empty a lot shorter than many of the other um, assault rifles and the AEK is actually a very very long one which is, and this is one of the big downsides of the AEK is the long reload time especially if you're fighting a lot of guys in close quarters the third number is the amount of time you have to wait until you can actually uh, ch uh, change back to weapons so say for example you're reloading and all of a sudden you see someone around the corner and you want to quickly change to another weapon and then maybe change back um, that's the threshold um, to get up, to get to that um, to that point now um, this next one is the recoil and we're going to be talking about recoil um, a, a little bit more um, in a later section of this video but what this effectively tells you is the amount of recoil you're going to get and which direction the recoil is going to go. So, and, I, and you work it out like this, for example, we've got these three numbers. This gun basically has 0.5 recoil to the left, 0.2 recoil up, and 0.3 recoil to the right. Now what that means is, is that every time you fire a bullet, um, it's going to go 0. Point, um, a random number between 0 and 0. 0.2 up. So it could go up 0. 0.01, it could go up 0. 0.05, it could go up 0. 0.1, or it could go up 0. 0.02. It's a random number between 0 and those figures. And then the same going across the middle here. Uh, you could go 0. 0.1 to the right, or it could go 0. 0.1 to the left, or it could go 0. 0.3 to the right, or it could go 0. 0.3 to the left, or it could go 0.5 to the left but essentially because you're getting a random number um, each time pulling it either left or right the odds will basically mean that that what the gun will eventually pull to the left because there is a higher um, amount of numbers on the left so eventually this gun is going to pull up and to the left because um, in terms of the recoil one side is higher than the other and this is okay this allows you to kind of see the direction that each gun is going to pull and how far so for example the kh02 the KH-2002 here um, is 0 0.4, 0 0.4, and what that means is that the, you don't, it's not going to pull to one particular direction or the other. It is going to pull, um, but you can't necessarily um, predict which way. And uh, here we've got in the M16, we've got a very sharp 
pull to the right um, and then other guns I've, I've got far less of the AK-74 for example is 0.2 0.3 which is a, a lot smaller than some of the others uh, AN-94 0.2 0.3 the G3A3 0.2 0.2 so very little side to side recoil on that one but do you see how useful this data is to helping you understanding to understand your gun and, and what is um, going on now there's a couple of other figures um, here as well we've got a green one and we've got um, an orange one now the uh, the f the first bullet you fire or the first between the second and first bullet you fire has a multiplier so what, what I mean by that is um, your first bullet goes fire gets fired roughly where you've aimed the gun your second bullet gets fired and it goes up 0.2 times that times that figure there but then between the second and third bullet it's just that and between the third and fourth bullet it's just that and the fourth and fifth bullet it's just that and so on and so on and so on and so on so it's always that one except for the gap between the first and second bullet which is multiplied by this number here now if we look down then what we can see is is that certain guns have a really high um, multiplier um, on that first to second bullet. Now that means that gun is going to jerk up into the air um, on that first bullet, um, whereas other guns are going to have a far smoother or a far more far more reduced one. So for example, if we look at the, the KH-2002 again, it's going to kick up a very small amount. The AK-74 is going to kick up a very, very small amount. But on the other hand, um, the F-2000 is going to shoot into the air. The AEK is going to shoot into the air. But of course, the AEK shoots up, but then actually has a relatively small recoil overall. So that will start to balance out but again this is what I'm talking about getting the data from the simthic.com to help you really understand what is going on um, with your gun next section we've got spread and this I, was, I did a video on spread the other day and uh, do check my battlefield playlists and go and check it out and um, talks about exactly how spread works and how you can try and can control it and understand it and this touch tells you exactly how much spread you have with each gun and it does change look 0.4 here 0.3 here 0.4 here 0.4 Point two here, so there are these guns definitely do have different spreads even within the same category of assault. So think how much how different it's going to be um, if I was looking at um, may, maybe a support weapon would probably have a huge spread, or of course a recon one would be far smaller because they, they tend to work in single bullets um, uh, fire. Now these last two numbers here, um, which actually seem to be fairly uh, universal for the assault category, tell you how much bigger the spread gets um, after each bullet, that spread circle, how much it's likely to kind of spread out after every single shot. And remember with kind of recoil and spread working together, your your fifth bullet could be um, a heck of a lot, um, uh, very, a pretty far distance from your from from your first one. And we'll be looking at those um, a little bit more later in this video and, and, in, and in future videos as well. So there is a huge amount of information here and I hope you can see um, the benefits. But that's not all. Um, Simthic.com also has um, this, which I think is amazing. In fact, well, the first time I saw this particular page, I, I, I was just like, oh my goodness, why have I never seen this before? Now, what this is, is um, a, a visual uh, representation of the spread pattern of each gun. And again, it's here for the assault class, the engineer class, the support class, uh, where there are multiple um, firing guns and the PDWs are here as well. Um, now what this does is it takes five bullet bursts. Okay, so this is this isn't a whole um, a whole mag dump or anything like that. This isn't thirty bullets. This is five, and um, basically when you're firing them over and over again, it's showing you the 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 possible outcomes that you could get um, from each particular uh, gun. So let's so let's stick with the the, the AEK. Um, as we as we started that way, and I'll just move the uh, the screen over so we can kind of see it there. Um, let's just drag that down a little bit. So what we can see here is that this green is all of the potential places that the the first bullet could land. Let's just compare that, um, of course, to the the gun next to it, the AK-74, and you can see that the 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 spread on that first potential bullet is a lot bigger on the AK than it is from the AK-74 and the AN-91, and indeed a lot farther than the AUG as well, and a lot bigger than the G3A3. So this again, this is understanding the gun. This is why people use the GA3 and the uh, um, and the AK-74 for those long-range shots because that first bullet is going to go, look at that green dot, almost exactly where you tell it 
um, to go. And then if we're going back to the AEK here. The yellow is the second bullet, the orange is the third bullet, the light red is the fourth bullet, and then this dark red is the fifth bullet. And you can see um, all of the potential places that these bullets could um, end up. I think this is simulating something like 500 rounds or something like that. Um, and you could, it, I mean, it's feasibly possible that your AEK could come off to the right like this. You know, one, two, three four five it is probably it's possible very unlikely but this five bullet burst could come off to the right but what this pattern is actually telling you very very clearly is that your likely recoil is going to be up and to the left accounting for the spread um, one way or the other but it's likely to be along this line so you're looking for that kind of thickest part here with the AK-74 you can see that the spreads almost almost there's almost a straight line kind of going up here about about one o'clock if this was a clock face this is more like kind of between 10 and 11, it's kind of like 10.30 um, going along there. So that means if I'm trying to control the recoil on my AEK, I'm going to want to pull down when I want to stop, or imagining I'm here, and then pull down in that direction. With the AK-74, I want to pull down in that direction. With the G3A3, look at that, very it's straight up and down. So with the G3A3, it's going to be a 100% a vertical pull down over quite a long distance, whereas um, the KH-2002, look at the height difference there. The GA3 has gone up this high. The KH-2002 has gone up this side, so that's going to be a far smaller um, recoil control burst. So again, this website helps you to understand the direction it's highly likely to go, and also helps you to understand why sometimes you get different results, because this is spread mixed with recoil and things like that. And it also helps you understand the direction you need to compensate for, the amount you're probably likely to need to compensate for, and helps you to understand why certain guns are so much more accurate um, than others. Very, very useful um, information indeed. Now this page can also really help us to understand how attachments will affect the gun that you are using. And if you have a look here, there's a drop down box that says please select an attachment and we can choose between suppressor, heavy barrel, foregrip. Now the heavy barrel for it is a very, very popular choice on um, a assault rifle, but what does it actually do? Now I'm going to be doing a, a video looking specifically at attachments and I'll, I'll go into those all of the attachments in more detail there. But just to show you an example, look at the size of these green dots on these first three um, guns here and also look at the gap between the green dots and the yellow dots i.e. the first and second bullets now let's turn on the heavy barrel and see the difference that we get look at that those green dots have shrunk massively that means that that first bullet has just got a lot more accurate than it did before which is why so many people put on the heavy barrel when they're trying to do those long range firefights but also look at the negative look at the gap between that first shot and the second and that first shot and the second it's increased that multiplier, do you remember this multiplier here? It's increased that orange figure here, the one that decides the, the multiplier between just the first and second um, bullet. The, I mean, the rest of the sprays is fine. The rest of the sprays as it was before, between two, three, four, 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 two, three, four, and five. But that gap between one and two just got a lot bigger. So you're going to have your first shot a lot more, and first more accurate, but then the rest of it, you're going to need to kind of pull down, almost jerk a little bit on that first shot to try and get the, the rest of the shots um, in that five bullet burst there as well. I'm not going to do the rest on this particular video, but do come in and have a little fiddle and have a look at how the rest affect the guns, and also look how it might benefit some guns more than others, of course, because this is this is very much a gun comparison. I mean, has this benefited the AEK, or has it benefited the AUG more, or has it benefited the, the L85A2 even more? You know, you can compare and see which kind of um, accuracy plot um, you like the look of most. Um, speeding ahead quickly, um, this is a brilliant tool as well. Say, for example, you're really thinking should I use this gun or should I use that gun? So for example, two very popular guns that people uh, like to use is the M416 um, which I put into weapon one and someone might be thinking well do I want to use something a little bit faster like the F2000? So I can put two guns in there like that. If I want I can put um, accessories on them um, and I can just hit compare and then it basically takes all the statistics we had in the first page and the second page and lines them up really nicely side by side so you can get a direct comparison of one gun um, compared to the other. It's also added in this lovely little graph here called Time to Kill as well. Now I'll look at we'll probably look at that another time, but um, at different distant different distances 
different guns will kill at different speeds. They they might be dead in 300 milliseconds, or it might take them a whole second, or something like that. But it's it shows you which will kill faster, which has got more recoil in different directions, which has a bigger gun magazine, um, which attachments are available for this gun. And look at this; it directly compares the the gun spreads um, as well. Even compares their iron sights down the bottom. Um, so that's a whole load of really interesting information when you're kind of thinking: Shall I use this gun or shall I use that gun? You could also use it to compare a gun with and without an attachment. So uh, let's go the uh, G3A3 for, for both boxes, but then on the second one, let's stick on a foregrip and hit compare. And of course, a lot of these details will be the same because they're both, if you look here, G3A3s. So all of the kind of uh, uh, stuff about uh, minimum damage and stuff is going to be the same because the, the foregrip doesn't affect that. But the recoil over here is different. The some of the spread stuff I think is different. And again the firing pattern it's very similar but it's different especially looking at the the accuracy on that first bullet. So again this is a really nice place to come when you're thinking well how would this particular accessory affect this particular gun. A few more things this website has got which we'll be looking at in the future. Um, it's got a list of all the uh, different types of scope tells you about how much they zoom in, shows you in a nice picture what that actually means in terms of how far you're looking down the, the, the road or the street, shows you how much it actually obstructs your vision, stuff like that, nice little page. There's a brilliant thread called Useful Data Gathered by Members, which has got a ton of threads in it, and you could spend probably hours looking through this kind of stuff. There's stuff about vehicles and vehicle perks, stuff about shotguns, stuff about headshot burst distance, um, stuff about running speeds, you know, or loads and loads of interesting stuff if you're looking to get into the to really understand mathematically what is going on um, there's a forum as well with loads of stuff two particular forums that caught my eye uh, were first of all this one which is a YouTube discussion thread where they actually encourage you to uh, post a little video of yourself playing Battlefield and then people will give you uh, critique on, on how you've done and how you could um, improve it. Obviously always um, read the, um, the the rules before you post on a forum like this, but what a great idea. Um, we've also got um, a forum dedicated to weapon reviews. So for example, if I click on the weapon reviews assault, we've then got lots of people that have written their own particular views of certain weapons. And of course, everyone has different opinions on what the best gun is. You only have to type Battlefield 3 best gun into Google and you'll get 10 different responses. But here we've got people kind of saying well this is what's good about that gun here's what's bad about that gun and of course it's a forum you'll get people replying and saying well have you thought about this have you thought about that well I like that which really again helps you to understand how to use certain guns and what's good and bad about certain guns um, there's also a, just a general weapon discussion forum as well which is really useful so for example someone's asking how competitive is the AS Val someone's asking um, which which uh, Weapon is the most popular. Someone's saying, "Well, what should I what should I carry for a jack of all trades loadout?" Um, so really useful um, technical weapon based stuff. So this is Simthic.com, and I hope that I have got you excited about it because it is absolutely brilliant. And uh, what I'm going to be doing in future videos is kind of picking a particular loadout, picking a particular gun, um, coming straight here and going, well, what's the stats on this gun? And then taking it straight into gameplay and then kind of actually putting the knowledge that we get here into practice. And I hope, in fact, I, I more than hope, I will more or less guarantee that my gameplay will be better because I have taken the time to understand my gun um, before I actually um, took it into the battlefield. If you have found this video useful, then first of all, please come and visit simthic.com. Secondly, if you could give this video a like and subscribe to the channel, that would be absolutely brilliant. And um, I do hope that you would join me for... Um, I've, got, I've got loads of Battlefield tutorials already on the channel, but um, I do hope you will join me for the, uh, the future videos when I will be coming back to this website and trying to find out um, more stuff about weapons. And I'm sure this website will be covering Battlefield 4 as well as they have been so successful in doing Battlefield 3. Thank you so much to Simthic.com for um, putting this stuff together and um, thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye bye.